full disclosure, I always dreamed of being a teacher, and that might be because of some of the educators I had in my life, like Grace Byers, who taught me AP English a long time ago at Northwest Cabarrus High School. Hey, Miss Byers, if somebody links this to you, or Madame Moulinax, who taught me French for three years. Anyway, I thought I would share with y'all some of the data for what's happening in Cabarrus County. Now, if you are not a nerd, you can just hang out and learn anyway. But for the person who asked me what's happening with growth trends in our different municipalities inside Cabarrus County, this is for you. If you're thinking about moving to Cabarrus County, you might be curious about what all that entails. So let's take a look at the population numbers and I will make an actual picture of this to attach to this video if you can't see the numbers and I'm gonna put my readers on so I can see it. So Cabarrus County's population estimate, of course it's always an estimate because people come, people go, people are born and people die and then the government runs these numbers which is why it's not gonna be super accurate all the time. Our population in this county shows us 235, 797 and I can account for four of those people, me and my husband and my two kids, hey, what's up? So when you think about that, it's not a huge county, but we're big enough that we have all of the services you'll need, all of the retail and the shopping and the dining. And the perk of not being ginormous is that there's a lot of support for local business here. So a lot of our smaller restaurants and boutiques do very well. So let's break down the county into our five municipal regions. The biggest of our cities in Cabarrus County is Concord. That's the county seat. That's where I am right now. We've been here since the 1700s. And so this is an area that goes way back, way, way, way back. So if you think about this, we are a land grant county. We were part of the original Carolinas, which was a stretch that went from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and the original times before everything got broken up in the U.S. and our constitutional republic. So Concord's been the county seat here for a long time. Now our population in Concord shows us 109,896. Now that's gonna be broken up into two specific areas. 28025 is the downtown old Concord area where I'm located right now. And then 28027 is what is lovingly called the Golden Crescent. And that's gonna be the newer stretch where Concord Mills is located and where a lot of our larger subdivisions are located, including Highland Creek and also Moss Creek and Skybrook. So as you're considering Concord, just know that in a city that's not huge with 109,000 people, there are different areas with different personalities. Now the growth in Concord is on an upward swing because we do have a lot of employers that are moving here our tax program has been really beneficial to bringing businesses in. And one thing that you should know, if you're the person who thinks tax credits are bad, think about it this way. It is a way to allow corporations to get moved here, to bring their capital here, and to bring people here so that as the jobs are created, the dollars can be spent here. The return on investment for tax credits is way, way bigger than the amount of those credits. And by the way, it's not like a check is being written to any of these companies. It is an offset to encourage them to come in and build facilities. For example, Eli Lilly right now, and you can watch the video over here about Eli Lilly, is under construction on a facility that's over a billion dollars invested in Cabarrus County where pharmaceuticals will be manufactured. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm very glad to know that the pharmaceuticals can be manufactured here in the U.S. in Cabarrus County and not shipped in from overseas. So Concord on an upward trend. And by the way, I have a really cool fun fact for you towards the end, so stay tuned. And you should subscribe and ask questions, by the way, if there's something you want me to make a video about. Now, Kannapolis has been the sleeping giant in Cabarrus County. Kannapolis is the home of Dale Earnhardt. And so Earnhardt is how you say that. He was the number three, the good wrench, the king of NASCAR for a long time before he died uh, very young. And what you should know about Dale Earnhardt's legacy in Kannapolis is that the statue is there. People still come from all over the country to pay homage to one of the greatest racers of all time. Dale Earnhardt Racing is still here run by his widow and then his son is still active in the NASCAR world as well. Kannapolis was also the home of Cannon Towels, Cannon Mills. And so if you go look at your old linen closet or your mama's or your grandma's, you probably had some Cannon Towels in there. And if they're the original ones, they have the little Cannon, like from the battlefield on the logo before it became Fieldcrest Cannon when there were some corporate M&As going on. So you may have Fieldcrest Cannon Towels. Kannapolis was a textile town. And what you should know too is that there was always this imaginary, well not really imaginary, a rift between Concord and Kannapolis people 
because a lot of the mill managers and the upper management lived in Concord. The owners were over here and the workers were in Kannapolis. And in fact, I grew up in Cabarrus County, but I was in the unincorporated part of the county. So I really wasn't as much a part of the fuss between Concord and Kannapolis, but there's some bad blood at the Concord Spiders versus the A.L. Brown Wonders between their football teams has been there forever. Well, Kannapolis being the home of Cannon Mills was also the site of North Carolina's largest mass layoff ever in 2003 when Cannon Mills went under after a whole bunch of corporate raidering that went on. And that has put, it put a damper on the town. I mean, when you lose all your generational jobs and y'all, if you are the person who fusses about manufacturing people, I'm just going to step on your toes because you forget that there are people that I went to high school with who went to work at the mills right after graduation. It's good, honorable work. It paid well. And it was also generational because some of the kids that I graduated with, their mamas and daddies had worked at the mills and their grandmas and granddaddies had worked at the mills. And it was a generational, honorable working job. Well, when you lost all those manufacturing jobs, you also had people whose skills were limited. They were limited to the textile industry, which had gone overseas. The state did swoop in and offer a bunch of education, but that is a long lag time. And so property values in Kannapolis just went right around the time of that mass layoff and they didn't go anywhere because what happens right after that, you have the Great Recession that starts. And when the Great Recession started, everything went down. Well, Kannapolis had already sunk so it didn't really fall off the map, which was all right, but it just stayed stagnant for a long time. Concord growing, you got the quarter on 85, you had Concord Mills, you had jobs, and Kannapolis just kind of treading water. So it became a really good value spot in the county. Well, a few years ago, a public-private partnership sprung up in the middle of Kannapolis. It took the single A baseball team, which was formerly known as the Bowl Weevils, and then the Intimidators is now the Cannonballers, they built a new single A stadium right there in the heart of Kannapolis at Cannon Village and did this amazing revitalization project with the swinging benches and the little fountains and all the tiny amazing companies that have grown up there and it has become a pedestrian delight and you'll see so many people that just go spend some time in Kannapolis now and we're grateful for that. So Kannapolis has been upswinging big time. Now their population 55,448 this has always been, like I said, the value spot, and now it's the hot spot. That's part of why when you're buying real estate, you should always know you're buying the past, you're buying the present, but you're also buying the future. And so talk to your real estate pro about what's happening in and around the area because a little history can tell you why some areas took longer to take off than others did and why some settled down first. And that's our job as your local expert to give you that color commentary. Now, the third biggest town in Cabarrus County is Harrisburg. That's where my personal house is located. We are at 19,822. Harrisburg sits at the edge of the county, and it's very interesting when you look at it on the map because it is not one contiguous incorporated area. There's little pockets of Harrisburg. It's only been a town since 1973. In fact, this is the 50th anniversary of Harrisburg, and it is fantastically located with proximity to all of the highways, but the challenge in Harrisburg has always been getting a retail center in place, getting dining in place. Instead, the residents tend to go to Charlotte or Concord or Kannapolis or Mount Pleasant to find somewhere to go eat, which hopefully will turn the corner now that we have a really great anchor restaurant in, in Bubba's Bunkhouse. But I will point out, it's kind of a running joke, but it's not even a joke. If you need auto parts, you come to Harrisburg because we have all the auto parts stores. Now, Harrisburg is not known for being a home of business, although there are some businesses located in and around there, specifically around the NASCAR industry. If you're a Lionel Trains fan, Lionel Trains is right there in Harrisburg, and there's also a rebar company that has come in from France. Most of the folks in Harrisburg commute. Midland is a tiny little town in Cabarrus County, and the numbers are a little estimated because the census doesn't give a lot of attention to towns under 5,000 people. But Midland sits in the area of the county just outside of Harrisburg, headed towards Stanley County. Their population shows as 3805. Now, if you're wondering why Midland hasn't grown by leaps and bounds, even though there is growth going out 2427, there's some poor soil in that part of the county. And when you've got poor soil, it's hard to do perk test if you're going to do well in septic. And also when an area doesn't have density, you don't have a lot of water and sewer going on. So when we talk about the growth areas of the county, we always want to take into account the infrastructure lines and where people can go. The smallest of our towns in Cabarrus County is Mount Pleasant, but I doubt it will be the smallest for long because the growth in Mount Pleasant has been staggering. 
there is a great united effort of their town management with the elected officials and the planners to bring the infrastructure lines down Main Street and revitalize that area. You've got the cutest businesses in downtown Mount Pleasant, and there's a big announcement coming soon about the former movie theater, so I'll just leave that little tidbit here. Make sure you subscribe because you'll want details on that. But Mount Pleasant also is going to have a large subdivision coming in that's going to add probably 25% to the tax base. And what that's gonna mean is new people in town, which is a little bit of a sticky wicket to tread because you have some old guard people there. But there's also opportunity there because when you expand the tax base, you're creating opportunities for money to be spent right there. So we're talking hopefully new grocery restaurants and shopping opportunities in Mount Pleasant where they are currently 2222. And I love it, that's the number on the website. I don't know if it's real or not, but it's fun. And kind of makes me think about Hee Haw. If y'all remember when they would say, let's give a big salute to Mount Pleasant, North Carolina, population 2222, salute. And you should comment in the comments if you felt that with me. So you're gonna see growth here in the way of residential, which is going to lead to more growth. Midland, I don't know if you're gonna see a huge amount of growth just because of soil and infrastructure issues, but over time, we know that the population has to go somewhere because growth is happening. Harrisburg is a great area to be in, but it's struggling with its growth. Kannapolis, look at what y'all have done. Thank you for leading the way. And Concord is continuing to find ways to revitalize its own downtown. Now, I promised y'all a fun fact for the end of this video. The home ownership rate in all of Cabarrus County is just over 70%. So this is an area that values a way for people to find their path to home ownership. By the way, there's a video over here that can talk about down payment assistance. We'd love to help you figure out how to make that house a reality. And Concord mirrors the county when it comes to home ownership rate at 70%. Harrisburg is at 89% homeowner. There's just not a lot of renter activity in Harrisburg, and that's because the only multifamily you have in Harrisburg would be the townhouses at Harrisburg Town Center and also the townhouses at Farmington Ridge and the new Farmington. There's not any apartments in Harrisburg and you don't see a whole lot of renter opportunities except for the occasional single family, which means that if you want to invest in rental properties, it's a great place to find something because you're providing a good alternative to somebody who's not in the space to buy right now. The home ownership rate in Kannapolis is just over 62%. So what that means is that we do have a lot of neighbors in Kannapolis that are currently renting and may just need some educational boost to get themselves to home ownership. It does mean that investors have a large foothold in Kannapolis. And part of that comes from earlier in my video talking about the downturn in the market that happened when Fieldcrest Cannon closed its doors. But what it means is that as a realtor, I have an obligation to make sure I'm talking to the neighbors in Kannapolis about their own pathway to home ownership so they can take advantage of down payment assistance and other programs to take that little house they're living in and make it their own because y'all, the pride that comes from ownership is showcased in all of these towns when you see how they are working together to bring in opportunity for everybody around us. Now, for more information about Cabarrus County or surrounding areas, make sure you drop me a comment or a direct message and I'll be glad to answer in video form because I love living here. I'd love to help you live here. And if you're looking to buy or sell, you should call me because I'll put all the data to work for you.